In the last lessons, we did work with Xcode 15 beta version 4. But in the meantime, since I recorded and uploaded them, Xcode 15 beta version 5 actually got released, which fixes all of the Swift data related issues that I had when trying to add Swift data to this VisionOS project. So in today's lesson, lesson number five, we will be refactoring the app to use Swift data for persistence. And for that, I have created an example here. So I have a to-do list called groceries. And in that to-do list, I have one to-do called salad, which is currently moved uh, to the done section. So um, let me rerun this project actually. And then you will notice that groceries is still there if I'm able to select it, right? And salad is also still in the done column. And of course we can toggle it. So the app is exactly the same, but we have persistence. Now I implemented this in about five minutes. So let's see how long it will take us today while I also explain what we're doing in this lesson. So let me quickly revert all of these changes so we can implement it ourselves in this lesson. All right, so I just switched back to the main branch of this repository, enabling me to re-implement everything that we need for Swift data support. And for that, I want to start by um, yeah, resetting up our models. So of course we will have to import Swift data. Let me also zoom in a bit to Xcode here so it's easier to see. In uh, the project so far, we use structs to define the to-do list and the to-do item. But in Swift data, we can instead use an add model class. So this exact setup here, and let me copy that and paste it for the bottom struct as well. Now, Swift data models are identifiable by themselves. So we can get rid of that uh, protocol conformance for both of these. And we can also get rid of the ID property because that is automatically synthesized when you're using the add model um, Swift macro. Let's also change the title to be a var. And let's change this uh, items property to have the relationship annotation and make sure that it is cascading. Cascading means that when we're, for example, deleting a to-do list, all of the items that a to-do list has a relationship with will also get deleted. This is what cascading means, and that's why it is relevant to use that attribute in most cases, of course. And then as you can see um, in the error message here, at model requires an initializer be provided for a to-do list that is from the macro model. So we will create an initializer, luckily, Xcode 15 basically does all of that for ourselves, but I want this item array to be empty by default. And that way we can get rid of it in the initializer and we can just initialize our to-do list with its title. So let's do the same stuff for our to-do item. We can get rid of the ID once again, because that is automatically created. We can make the title a variable and we can make the is done false by default. And then let's also create an initializer getting rid of the is done flag again, because that is set to false by default. We don't need to explicitly initialize it. And with that, in just a few minutes, we have uh, rewritten our structs into model classes for Swift data. So with that out of the way, we can now tell our app to use the model container for these models and store them in Swift data. So in our main abstract, let's import Swift data. And on our window group, let's add the model container for our to-do list.self. As I've mentioned in a few other Swift data lessons, you could turn this into an array and also explicitly specify to do item.self. But since to do list has a relationship with item, it is not needed to specify both of them. So let me revert that again. I think this is cleaner. But of course, you're open to use whatever implementation you want. Let's also make sure we copy this model container view modifier here and use it in our preview in case you want to actually 
uh, use the preview in your project. As I mentioned before, I'm not going to use it in this uh, course just because it does slow down Xcode quite a bit while I'm recording my screen as well. All right, so let's move on to our content view and in here let's import Swift data, same thing as always. And when we're working with Swift data, I have added an Xcode shortcut here where uh, you can watch a video on that as well. That just enables me to quickly access the model context from the environment because we will need that to create new to-do lists and then also create new to-do items in our to-do list view. All right, so uh, most of our setup stays the same. So we will still have our to-do lists array, but we don't need a default value for that. And instead of add state, we will use add query. This makes sure that it is saved and persisted through Swift data. All of the other variables can stay the same. And I always like to have an, a line break between my environment variables and my uh, other variables. Most of our setup stays the same, but of course the initializer for to-do list changed, so we don't need to explicitly specify an empty items array here. And instead of using to-do lists.append, our new list, instead we will use our model context.insert method and insert this list into the model context. Once again, the model context is available to us through the add environment property wrapper here which we can use because we have specified a model container, which internally has the model context or model container dot main context, I believe is what we're using in Swift UI by default. Uh, because of this view modifier here, we can use it in the preview. Because of this scene modifier here, we can use it in the actual running app. So with that setup, the content view is already done, but we still have to do a few changes to our to-do list view. So once again, we will import Swift data. And then let's also um, use the model context or grab the model context from the environment because we will need it again uh, when we're creating our to do items down here, but we will do that last. You might remember our little dance here with the item index in our button, the buttons that toggle whether a to do is currently done or not. We don't have to do that dance anymore because we're now using classes instead of structs. So this is a uh, reference basically now and not a value, um, a topic for another lesson. But if you know what that means, then you now understand why we needed that dance beforehand. Now we don't need it anymore. So now we can just say item dot is done dot toggle. So this is a lot cleaner now using this button. And then let's just copy that and replace the little dance in our second section here as well. It would be a nice homework for you to collapse these two sections perhaps into one reusable view. So factor it out and then just use that view once in here instead of the H stack and once in here instead of the H stack. Nothing that we will cover in this lesson, but might be a nice homework for you to try that out yourself. All right, and then the last thing that we will need to update is how we create and insert new to-dos. So the initializer once again is changed because we don't need the is done flag anymore. As you remember, we set that to false by default and removed it from the initial in initializer of our to-do item. So we can get rid of that. And then before we append the to-do into our list.items relationship um, setup, we first need to insert it into the context. So we will say model context dot insert our to-do. For some reason, there is no autocomplete for model context dot insert, but we did grab it from the environment, so we should be good to go. And with that, let's run it in the simulator and see if anything changed or if I still have the exact same setup as before. And it looks like nothing changed for me. Everything is still persisted. But just to try it out, let's add a new to-do list. And I will call this video ideas. Let's create that. And in the video ideas, let's add another to-do. Uh, let's say, for example, plan the next Vision OS lesson. So let's hit create. We got that in there and I haven't done that yet, so I'm not going to toggle it. 
for some reason the sidebar is frozen for me and it doesn't show the hover effect. I am guessing that that is also a beta issue in the Xcode 15 beta. So if I run the app again, then you will probably notice and uh, we still have the zooming in and out <laughs> issue in the Vision OS simulator. So let me grab that, make it a bit bigger and zoom in again just like that. So now you will notice that I can select groceries, but I can't select uh, the next one. This is most likely a Vision OS beta issue. So once that is fixed, I will let you know in the pinned comment below the video. But for now, you have now learned how to add Swift data to your Vision OS project. It's actually super simple. Make sure your models are at model classes. You define your relationships properly and you create custom initializers. Then make sure that you create the model container for your window group and for all of your previews. And then just adopt your code a little bit to use the model context and the add query property wrapper instead of the add state property wrapper.